Hi everybody, Nick here with another guide for new pilgrims. Today I want to talk to you all about albergues. I'm going to be going really fast because I know that your time is valuable. Remember you can always pause, rewind or even better, subscribe and that way you can come back to me whenever you like and not miss the other guides. Let's get on with it. There are different kinds of albergues. They all kind of run the same way but it's uh, useful to understand the differences between them. There's the public or municipal albergue. These are the ones that are run by the local authority. Uh, they're generally the cheapest. They can sometimes be the most basic, but not in every case. Sometimes there there can be a nice surprise. Uh, as of 2022, the price would be around six to ten euros. We have the parochial, if I'm pronouncing that right, um, donativo albergues. These are generally, uh, but not always, run by uh, a religious um, thing. Uh, they can include a, a service as part of it but the main point is that they're donation based. You give what you can afford. Please don't make that an excuse to be cheap though. Uh, I generally will put 10 euros down for one of those because the, uh, the donations are important to them. Then there's the Pilgrim Association albergues. There's quite a few groups normally of ex-pilgrims uh, who have set something up um, it's generally ex-pilgrims working there on a volunteer basis. Um, they can be a charge for the night, but they can also be um, donations too. Uh, all very useful and you can get some great advice there as a new pilgrim because a lot of the people working there have been there, done that and got the sample. Or is it T-shirt? Then you get the private albergues. There can be a whole range on these. They range from maybe eight euros to 24 euros uh, for the night. Uh, the price doesn't necessarily say how good it's going to be um, and they vary from creepy, uh, creepy strange hotel to uh, swanky Japanese hotel with the little cubicle beds and all that sort of thing. So all kinds of different things available. Moving up in the world you have funders and pensions. These are private rooms available normally by bars or restaurants or sometimes in a private house. Uh, you don't necessarily get your own bathroom en suite uh, but it's a bit of privacy where you possibly don't need the earplugs uh, for snoring. And lastly there are the three kinds of hotels in Spain. You've got the hostels, privately run cheaper hotels, then you've got hotels, generally a big chain, uh, and then you've got the paradors which are like an old monastery or a big building, an old ancient building made into a very, very posh hotel and paying for it. So what do you do when you arrive? Well, normally you'll get to uh, the reception desk or in some cases it's the, the bar of, of the coffee shop or, or an actual bar. Um, they'll always want to see your passport, uh, get your credential out as well. They don't always want to see it, but it's a great time to remember to, to get that stamped. Um, they'll normally show you to where it is. You'll either be assigned a bed or sometimes, depending on how early you got there, you get to choose a bed. I, I always go for bottom bunk, but that's just my choice. Uh, depending on the albergue, sometimes it'll have sheets and blankets. Sometimes you'll just get a, as much as a paper sheet um, that you put on yourself over a, a rubber mattress. So I normally make my bed and then decide where I'm putting, putting my stuff, really. Um, some albergues will have lockers for you to put things into. Um, do you know what? I've never ever had any problem with anybody stealing anything from an albergue. Um, certainly not in the first 700k. Uh, a lot of different people arrive in the last 100k. Can't really vouch for that. But because you build up um, a knowledge of all the people that you're walking with a lot over the first 700, your stuff's pretty much safe. So um, keep your, uh, your passport, your money, and the real tempting things with you, your phone, uh, maybe in a fanny pack, bum bag, whatever you call it. Uh, everything else is generally safe. Then you can think about uh, washing your clothes or washing yourself. If you're quite early there, um, there's a very good chance that there's hot water and people haven't used it all. In some places it never runs out of hot water, but uh, it's one to watch out for. I've had a few nights where it's either been a cold shower or nothing. Uh, for laundry, uh, there's a choice. You can do it in the sink. Um, sometimes I would just wear my clothes in the shower and start having a shower with the clothes on, soaping them as normal and then get undressed in the shower and, and continue. Um, or in many cases, there are washing machines and dryers 
that you can use. Um, they're about four euros, I think, for a wash and maybe two to use the dryer. If you're not using the dryer, there's generally a washing line. I took three small pegs with me. Uh, the real ultralighters like to just take three safety pins, but um, just train a bit harder and you can easily carry three lightweight uh, plastic pegs, I'm sure. Let's talk about the do's and don'ts uh, in an albergue. Uh, some of the etiquette that you can learn the hard way uh, or learn from other people doing it, but it's great if you can go in like a pro, know exactly what you're doing and what you should and shouldn't do. So let's go through, let's go through the do's first. Got me some notes for this one, there's quite a list. Okay, do's. Um, your shoes, your walking shoes at least, are normally um, kept on some kind of rack um, outside. It's not seen as a good thing to take sweaty, muddy boots into where everybody's sleeping. Nobody wants to be smelling other people's feet. So find where they're left safely. A good tip with that, there's been a few occasions where uh, if lots of people are wearing the same kind of shoes that somebody accidentally takes somebody else's shoes, uh, it wouldn't harm to change the laces to a different colour or attach something on the laces or something where it's quite obvious that if somebody puts your shoes on that they're going to know that they're somebody else's shoes. Just a little tip. Do always look under the bed and around uh, your locker or, or in the sheets um, before you go. A lot of the time you can be leaving early in the morning, it's dark, you don't want to wake anybody up. And that's where most of the loss on the, on the Camino occurs. Not because of theft, but because you just leave stuff behind while you're making a start on the next day. Another quick one is shower when you can. Um, <laughs> other people can smell you better than you smell yourself, so don't go two or three days. I met some people that, that thought because they're wearing merino, nobody could smell them. We can. Uh, don't forget as well, if uh, you've left all the floor wet when you get out of the shower, there's normally a mop in there to tidy up after yourself. Really important one, uh, make friends. Say hello to other people. Uh, most of the relationships, most of your family, your camigos, uh, are, are made in albergues, uh, where you're just having a coffee or a drink after you've got it sorted. Uh, so not necessarily lying on your bed shouting to other people on another bed, but certainly around, um, around the facilities with the people staying there that night, even if you're shy. Try and say a hello, smile at a few people, you'll be glad you did. Uh, another do, if you're planning on leaving early the next morning, make sure your bag is fully packed the night before as much as possible so that you're not rustling and banging around with a little torch on uh, while other people are trying to sleep. Uh, that way in the morning all you need to do is pick up your backpack plus any of the other things that weren't in your backpack separately, carry them all quietly out of the room where everyone's sleeping and pack, finish your packing off in the hall or lobby or outside the front door. Although some albergues might have different rules, but generally they don't, a fair rule of thumb is that it's lights out and quiet time between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. You will get some uh, pilgrims who are just tired and try and turn the lights out at 8.30. That happened to me. Uh, we just politely said they're going back on because we're all not tired yet. Um, in the same way, if you're getting up at four o'clock for some reason in the morning, don't be making a noise, don't be rustling around on stuff. And remember, if you're on the top bunk, everybody on the bot anybody on the bottom bunk is feeling an earthquake every time you move. So just think of other people. It's considered a big no-no to put your backpack actually on your bed. Uh, don't forget you take the backpack off during the walk uh, through the day and you're putting it on ground where animals have been over and stuff like that, where little insects or things that live on animals could get onto your backpack, then onto the bed, and then somebody a few days later has got those insects on them. So backpack off the bed. I think I'm mixing some of the do's and don'ts together here. It's quite hard, but it, let's head more into some don'ts then. Um, don't try and dry your socks and underwear by hanging, draping them off uh, the bed or the banisters. It doesn't look great. Uh, absolutely don't clip your toenails uh, while sitting on your bed with bits of debris flying everywhere. So another question is, should I pre-book uh, or reserve my albergue? And if so, how do you book them anyway? How does it work? 
Well, that's an entirely different video. That's the next one I'm going to make. If I've already made it by the time you watch this, it will be right at the end of the video. There'll be a little link that you can click on. But regardless, why not just subscribe and then you can find everything. You won't lose me in the jungle of YouTube and you can watch all of these hopefully helpful videos. If this was helpful for you, I'd be really thankful if you just hit that like to let YouTube know that it was useful. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone, and buen camino.